Hey folks, ever since I created the Pempro video, folks are asking me how to use the Pempro software and how to connect their machines, the mounts or equipment. So I just wanted to give you kind of a soup to nuts kind of video of how to use Pempro, how to connect, how to create the pec curve, how to upload that to your mount, how to validate the results. So first things first, go to the website the ccdware.com products Pempro and Pempro version 3 is available. If you scroll down, you will see a free trial and you can download that and try it out. It gives you three features. It gives you reduced periodic error, polar align and measuring the backlash. I didn't try these last two. I did try polar align a little bit, but it seems more complicated than sharp cap. So I just left it alone. And then measuring backlash, I never tried that one. If you are interested, this is a paid software, but if you are interested like in a free software, and if you have a Celestron mount, I recommend you download the CPWI software. And they do have a PEC tool feature inside CPWI and use that one and it's free. The reason why I was interested in the, this software it pretty much does the same thing as the PEC tool, but when you upload it, you can invert the curve, you can smooth the curve. There are a couple of features there that are pretty interesting. And also users gave pretty good feedback. These are the actual results from the users. So they said uh, for the software BISC, the PE before was 3.8 and PE after is like 0.8. That's a pretty good deal for a high-end mount like software BISC or astrophysics mount. So that's why I was thinking of using this one. You might get a similar results even if you use PEC tool. So I will not discourage you to use the PEC tool versus this software. Okay. So just putting it out there. So when you start the PEMPRO software, when you download it and install it, first thing that you will notice is it takes time to actually load it, even on a pretty good machine. So if you double click it, nothing happens for a while. Even though my machine is like super fast, it has pretty good, like 16 gigabyte RAM. It takes like a, you know, half a second or a half a minute to load it. I was wondering why. Anyway, so once it loads it, the initial user interface is pretty intimidating. It looks very techy. But once you get used to it, I think it's uh, pretty normal. If you go into help, and if you go to the help here, and if you scroll down in the overview, it gives you a very high level workflow of what you need to do. But click on this thing section and look at this one. So this is the actual workflow. It makes sense. Once you look at this workflow, you run the calibration wizard, you acquire the data with the PEC disabled. So you have to disable the PEC and then acquire the data. Create the PEC curve and then you program the PEC curve that nothing but just upload the PEC curve to your mount. And then you acquire the data again with the PEC enabled. The reason you are doing this is to measure how much is your periodic error once the PEC is enabled and you look at before and after and if it is reduced, great. If it is not, it's they are asking you to invert the PE curve and then upload it back to your mount. Try to take the data again with the PEC enabled. So that's the kind of workflow that you follow. So it's not that complicated as they were saying. All you have to do is connect your mount and the CCD camera, your imaging camera itself is good enough. You don't need to use like guide camera for this one because uh, you are really playing around with your mount. You are not really using that for guiding. So you can use the guide camera as well. But I used the imaging camera and the imaging telescope just to make sure I get pretty good results. Okay. So here is the step one. You have to do a good polar alignment before you wanted to use the pack. A good polar alignment is going to help you measure the periodic error properly. Once the polar alignment is done, 
I'm actually going into Sequence Generator Pro Control Panel. I go into Plate Solve, and this is step number two. I wanted to make sure I do a solve and sync blind. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure that I didn't use two star or six star element. I didn't use CPWI. Having a pretty good go to is a must. Right now it is blind solving it. Yeah, watch my plate solve video. It's called plate solve and quick align video. I'll put a link out there. If you don't know how to set a plate solve in sequence generator pro. So what this will do is it will give you a pretty good go to for your mount. This is step number two. Okay, step number three. I'm using the auto focuser, like I'm actually dialing into manually. I'm trying to make sure I set the focus right. Your focus is pretty good at 1.63 for now. I'll leave this focus here. Keep in mind that you have to if you are using monochrome, make sure you are using the luminance filter, not the hydrogen alpha. Because if you set hydrogen alpha, you don't see any stars at all. You don't want that one. You wanted probably a luminance filter when you are doing the periodic error curve. So step three is complete. So click on configure scopes and mounts and create a new mount. It's that way it's easier. I'll just call it CGX only. And yeah, I'll come back and select Celestron later. But here I'm selecting in the ASCOM the Cel Celestron telescope driver. So when I click properties, I should be able to see the COM port, it's COM 13 for now. Click OK. So the mount is connected. I'm just using the hand controller to connect it. I actually forgot to put Celestron right away. I went back and changed it to the telescope and mount type as Celestron. You don't need to change any numbers here. Okay, just leave everything as default. Okay, so it supports pretty much EQ mod lot of mounts. So make sure you select Celestron. When I was doing it, actually I forgot selecting Celestron. I went back and uh, fixed that. So I selected the CGX only profile, connected the scope. They call it connect the scope. It's actually connect the mount. But scope is also there on the mount. Anyway, so I have a monochrome I have RASA on it, so I select highest dynamic range as my unity gain for this 1600 monochrome camera. So that's pretty much what you need to do in order to connect the scope on the mount. You don't need to change any numbers here at this particular point. So I selected Celestron as the mount. Okay, so our scope and So we have the scope and uh, camera connected. So we are not in the southern hemisphere. If it is, you need to select that. The first thing you have to do is you need to go to the wizard. Yeah, wizard and calibration wizard. So this is where you have to perform these four steps. I think one of the steps is not required out of four. That's a good news. So you see the declination there and you see the right ascension and that it says the angle. So the deck has to be zero as it was saying on the top. So all you have to do is make sure all three over here become green. So moving my mount almost close to the deck equal to zero and the right ascension as well 
I moved it around. So now my telescope is pointing close to the west and uh, close to the meridian. It's like southwest, I would say. Okay, this will take a couple of minutes. Once you point your scope there, everything turns green. So your telescope is pointing towards that west or the southwest region. Your camera is on as well. You go to the second step. It says that this step will calculate your image scale. You can actually type your image scale manually if you want to. Or if you can take an image, click on take image. That's what it asks you to do. And I just clicked on taking the image. Make sure you are perfectly focused by the time you get here because you don't want to have any focusing issues. And also make sure you are not using narrowband filters. You are using only the luminance filter because you wanted bright stars to be visible to the scope. Very critical step. It opens up this little software. You have to be patient and wait. Okay, so it opened the software and what it will ask you to do is make sure you understand where the start trails are. Press begin or end or start or end, right? You can zoom out here or zoom in here if you want to. And if you scroll down, you will see the stars there. What it is trying to do is trying to calculate the image scale. So if you scroll down, So start from there all the way to the top. You press like, you know, all you have to do is just, uh, yeah, you don't need to zoom in way too much. And the end is over there on the top. Yeah, end is like beyond the image. So there will be stars in this image that are going to show like those lines. I believe what was happening is when they asked you to do it, they wanted to calculate the image scale. So in order to do that, I think probably they are turning off the tracking of the mount and, and uh, seeing how much is the star trail like for 15 seconds or so. I'm just guessing it. That's how they are getting this stuff. And then when you say here is the size of it, they can measure not only the angle, but also they can measure the star trails and understand the image scale of your, uh, of your image train. So all you have to do is press the begin and end. Just be consistent on what you do on the begin to the end. That way at least you get a good result. Okay. After a few of them are done, just say save and exit. They'll figure it out. I just gave like four of them. If you go to the next step from here, this is the step, step number three. You can actually ignore it if you are using Celestron mount. Okay, go to the next step and press the start button. So this will capture the star trails pattern. And the number four is actually to start. That's all it is. So it is exposing right now as we speak. And it is capturing the star trails. So star trail has a pattern here. Like this and down, this and up. So pick one of those. It will actually show you the star trail when the image opens up. So select one of these. I think they will understand, you know, the image angle or whatever they need. Yeah, this will take like a couple of minutes to open that up. And if you zoom out or scroll up and down, you will see like that, right? So this goes up and goes up. Again, image and going up, image and going up. So you know like it is like that, right? So whichever way you feel like 
what that was yeah you can select only one of these I believe it is this and up okay and pretty much that's it so if you do this once this is called calibration and it understands all the numbers right the next step is to do acquire data so when you click on the start button it tells you that you wanted to make sure the pack is off so make sure the pack is turned off and click on start and it will pick a star so if you don't find the star here you increase this subframe to 100 by 100 if you don't see the star and also this will help you if it is drifting so if you are not perfectly polar aligned the star goes away from here so you don't want the star to disappear from here if not you need to like restart and start over again I would say pretty much start from the beginning if your star disappears if your star is going away you just lost the time so you need to be careful to make sure the subframe is 100 by 100 I changed the binning to actually 2 as well after a while a couple of trial and errors because I couldn't figure out the star and, and the cloud cover is coming up a little and the star disappeared so I have to restart but when I restarted it I put the binning equal to 2 so it tells you your the one cycle of your warm cycle is only like 8 minutes or so but in my case I think it does peak to peak or whatever and it takes like 15 minutes for one warm cycle to complete so for you to complete like five cycles it might take anywhere between one hour to one hour 15 minutes or so so I did for five warm cycles recording like this I didn't touch my mount I kept watching the star you there is nothing much we can do if the star is drifted okay just so after spending I don't know like an hour and 12 minutes or so it recorded close to five warm cycles and for every cycle it basically creates a new color kind of a curve so Ray told us to you know not go beyond like four or five warm cycles you don't need to so it counts the warm cycles on its own so I don't think we need to worry about it it understands where the peak is and it goes to the next peak so what this is is your warm gear is spinning and anything that rotates creates a sign curve which is like it goes up comes down goes up and comes down so whenever it goes up comes down and goes up again the the top of both up are called peak to peak so it measures the periodic error between the first peak to the second peak or if you have three or four then it just averages and tells you how much is your uh, periodic error is that's what this particular activity is doing and also this is not like a simple up and down you know as you can see these are those are you know the signature of your mount right after I'm done with the five cycles I stop this and it will ask you a question saying that would you like to immediately analyze and create the peck curve so you say yes so here is where it gives you kind of the RMS error and the periodic error so yeah this is this is uh, using the C14 after this I recorded again I got like two point something
So you need to look at your RMS error and by changing these models, I think Ray recommended to use quadratic, I guess. And that is where the, the periodic error is low and the RMS error is low. I recreated this curve a couple of times and all you have to do is create pack curve. It says that program your mount. If you say yes, it is going to write it to your mount. Writing to the mount. This pack curve is on the mount. For you to play back when, while you are taking pictures, all you have to do is click on the pack on and nothing else. When you click on the pack on, let me show you. Okay, so when you go and turn on the pack on the machine, if you go to menu and then go into Utilities, right? And if you go down to this is on your mount, right? I'm showing the CGX mount. And if you scroll down after the GPS, you will see RTC turn on and off. Then you will see utilities spec. That utilities and pec option is the one that you need to get in. So this is for the pack playback. I'm just playing around with it. Give me a minute. It has two options, playback and record. And if you, you have to enter in the playback. So when you turn on the pack on your machine, let's say you turn it on, right? Then if you go back to your mount and look at it, go back one step. If you can see it, see that it automatically turns the play playback on. You could use the hand controller to turn the playback or you can use the software to turn the playback on. It doesn't matter which way you use. If you turn it off here, it gets turned off on the mount as well. If you don't want to use the software, since the PEC file is already on the mount, you can just use the hand controller to turn the playback on. So you don't need to guide anything uh, if you are taking shorter exposures. Okay, in the Sequence Generator Pro, one of the things that you have to do is, if you go here to this button, which is the control panel, which is nothing but your profile. Inside the auto guider, generally we give PhD2, right? And then you have all these set up for PhD2. If you are taking shorter exposures and if you are not using PhD2 anymore because you are doing the PEC playback, but you still need to dither to make sure that you are not getting, getting those banding effect. So, to do that, you can use something called direct mount guider. So this is a virtual guider that you can use to make sure that when your sequence is running, you dither, I set it up as every two seconds because that was working for me. I said every one frame, it's not, not a big deal. That's how much I really need to dither to make sure that it is not messing up. Settling at less than 0.5 pixels. This doesn't make sense because this is not really looking at the star or anything. That's why I said like for 5 seconds. Just wait for 5 seconds and move on. And it did work with these setups quite well. So it was dithering without PhD2 and basically using the direct mount getter. Right. I hope this video helps you reducing the periodic error that you have and then 
I am getting unguided images uh, with shorter exposures. If you have very high end mount, you could get lot longer exposures if you turn the back on. Thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe.